You see, ladies and gentlemen, the principle here of Matthew 13, 31 is that Yah is going to plant Israel in its own land. He is going to give us a majesty and a glory among the nations that will be like a mustard tree, like the birds of the air going to nest in our branches. There's going to be people coming to ask us for the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of Torah. We're going to be like this, only much more glorious. But there's even more to this because the metaphor is very, very deep here. But what we want to do is express the concept here that it's talking about in this passage and that of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 12. So let's go to Isaiah 2, verse 12. Yeshayahu 2, 12. For the day of Yehovah Sevaot will come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it will be brought low. This is a teaching that is also taught in Psalm 119, verse 122. Psalm 119, verse 122. Let's go there together, please. Be surety for your servant for good. Do not let the proud oppress me. You see, in Hebrew, the word here is arov avdecha letov. The idea of arov is this idea of a protective fence. You see, in religious areas of Israel, the Orthodox Jewish populations and communities, they put up what's called an eruv, a fence around their communities that say, within this fence you can do so many things, and with outside the fence you can do so many things, etc., etc. You can read about that. That's in Jewish halakha. It's called an eruv. It's from the same root. You see, the concept that Psalm 120, 119, 122, be surety for your servant, literally is, be a protection, a guard. Keep an eye on us. Watch what we're doing. Be a guard, a protection, surety. Just take our stand, take our, support us. You see, he's got faith in us. He's got faith in you. He believes in you. So why can't we believe in him? It's mutual. And he says, please be a protection. Have faith in me, for I have faith in you. Be a protection and have faith in your servant for good, says the psalmist. Don't let the proud oppress me. The idea here is oppression from the proud. What do the proud do to us? The arrogant. Well, I can tell you from experience that there's a pressure that oftentimes is put forth by proud, arrogant people. Essentially, what they say to us is, if you will go along with my plan and have faith in me and look to me, I'll stop oppressing you. And our natural inclination would be to say, I don't like the pain that you're putting on me, so I'll go with your program. I'll just kind of go along with you. So the psalmist says, please protect me from these power mongers, these power mongers, these hungry people that want to just eat me for dinner. They're proud and arrogant and they just want to pull me away from you and your word. And we say, please, Yah, please be surety for me. Protect me. Put an air roof around me. Put a fence, a wire, a guard around me. Watch what I'm doing. Pay attention to what I'm doing, Yah. Help me. I want to turn to Matthew 17, 20. Yeshua was saying to his Talmudim, because of your unbelief, assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. This was talking in the context about the Talmudim coming back and into uh, to Yeshua after they had tried to cast out a bunch of very hard difficult demonic forces from people and Yeshua says if you have faith as a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move nothing will be impossible for you also Yeshua answered and said to them in verse 21 assuredly I say to you if you have faith and you do not doubt 
you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Do you know what a mountain is? Do you know what the metaphor in Yeshua's plain sense of the term that he was using it in his teaching? Do you have any idea what those mountains are? You're saying, sure, I know. Yeah, a mountain is a mountain. Yeah, there's a mountain, the mountain, a mountain. No. You see, back in Yeshua's day, the greatest scholars of rabbinic Judaism of the day were called mountains. Rabbi so-and-so was called Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai. This rabbi was called the Mount of Olives. That mountain, that rabbi was called Mount Hermon. All of rabbinic Judaism knows from our studies, from our communities, that rabbinic Judaism of Yeshua's day had great scholars and teachers. They were called mountains. Mountain this and mountain that. This rabbi is mountain so-and-so. This is mountain so-and-so. That's mountain so-and-so. Yeshua says, if you had this kind of faith of a mustard, like this, you could say to this scholar, to this guy sitting in his ivory tower of great Torah learning, of great Tanakh learning, of great religious learning, you, I'm throwing you into the sea. What does that mean? Well, look, remember the story of Pharaoh. His whole army was thrown into the sea. The sea was the Yam Suf, the Red Sea. He drowned in it. That's not a good sign. In other words, you could take those mountains, those scholars, those religious leaders of not just of Yeshua's day, but of our own day. You could take those religious leaders and you could say to them, in my mind, I will not accept you as being a mountain. You are nothing more than a small little piddly hill, like all of us are a bunch of hills. And you could say to that person, I'm throwing you into the sea with this much faith and support in Yah's holy divine word. This much faith, I'll throw you into the sea. And your mind takes them and puts them into the ocean and drowns them along with the army of Pharaoh and those that want to control you and tell you how things are going to be, how to understand text, what you need to do, what you're not allowed to do, how you live, how you don't live, all of the stuff that Judaism does, that Christianity does, that every major religion puts on its adherents and those who follow its leaders. They're all considering themselves to be mountains. Toss them into the sea, folks, with a grain of a mustard seed here. Stand and play the game with Yah. The football game. Get out there and say, I'm with you. I'm supporting you, Yehovah. And he'll say, go get them, boys. Go get them. And that's what we do with the mustard. You see? Now, that ties into Isaiah 30, verses 20 through 21. Isaiah 30, verses 20 and 21. Let's go there. Adonai gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes will see your teachers. Now you have to read that in the Hebrew because it's really shocking. The English text is not bringing it out as I would like it to bring it out. The Hebrew concept that your teachers will not be moved into a corner, that's this word from the Hebrew word kan, uh, kanaf. A kanaf is a wing. It's a wing. Your teachers will not have wings anymore. Which teachers? Your man-made teachers. The guys who don't have this, they don't have faith like a mustard seed. They have faith like a cedar tree. In other words, these are the guys that are standing above you, men and women, who say, I'm above you, I know more than you, I'm in my ivory tower, I study more than you, I know, and you need to do what I'm telling you and interpret this text the way this is and have the authority, I have the authority to tell you what to do and you better follow me. And by the way, you better call all of our religious leaders, right reverends, holy reverends, rabbi, pastor, teacher, father, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? So it says in Isaiah that your teachers are not going to have wings anymore. Guess what? 
that paints a picture for me of wings getting clipped. Have you ever clipped the wing of a bird? It can't fly. You clip wings of birds, they don't fly anymore. So it says your teachers aren't going to fly anymore. You are going to go to your teachers. That is, Abba, the, the Ruach HaKodesh. Those are the teachers that you listen to. That is the new covenant. We'll talk more about this in a future episode of Torah on Location. This is just an introduction. We'll get more into it on a future program. Let's go on and talk more about things and deal with the wheat and the tares. Baruch Hashem, this is Avi Ben Morchai on location with Torah in the land of Israel.